Being an MSP is hard. You and your techs only have so many hours in the day and selling as many of those hours as you can is the key to growing profitably. This is why we at Synchro spend so much time perfecting our billing automations so more of your time can be utilized selling your services instead of managing administrative tasks. Now all of this is handled through Synchro's recurring invoice system, which looks like this here. The first question most MSPs ask is how do I bill my contracts in Synchro? The answer is typically however you want to, because we support just about every billing method you could ever conceive. Let's start with the most common. I have an all you can eat contract and I want to bill this contract based on how many endpoints any particular customer has. So we'll use the asset counter for this. We'll want to bill this against a product, which in this case is labor, and we'll give it a description. And as a side note, you can use tags here too. So we can use something like this to say this is June's managed services agreement or July's in the following month and so on without ever having to edit the recurring invoice itself. From here, you get to define what types of devices you want to charge for. If you want to charge the same rate for all Synchro devices, which means any endpoint with the Synchro agent installed, you'd set that here. You could even charge for every NAS device or network switch if you wanted to. Now, what if you want to charge one rate for servers and another rate for workstations? That's when you'd feed an asset search into the asset counter instead. These can be extremely in-depth if you need them to be, but for the sake of this video, I've made two asset searches, one that defines workstations and one that defines servers. So here I'm going to charge $100 a month for every workstation. You can see this line item has now been added to the recurring invoice. Next, I'll repeat the process, this time using my server asset search. Here I'm going to charge $150 per month instead. I'll add that as a line item as well. Now each month right before my recurring invoice fires, it's going to go off and count how many workstations this customer has and how many servers and bill accordingly. As these counts go up or down in any given month, we'll handle the adjustments for you automatically, meaning you can literally set these recurring invoices and forget them, like forever. Our recurring invoice system has deep ties to our policy inheritance model for endpoints as well. So you might have a customer like this with multiple sites perhaps broken down by workstations and servers at each. You could alternatively bill against policy folders as well. So if you wanted to bill one rate for site A's endpoints and another for site B's, that's possible. Or if you wanted to break down servers and workstations at each location and count those independent of one another, you can do that too. Now what if you wanted to bill by employee instead? Maybe you found that to be a more viable method. So instead of using an asset counter, you'd opt for the customer contact counter instead. All of our other fields here can effectively remain the same. And much like my asset counters, as the number of employees increases or decreases, we'll handle those changes in your recurring invoices for you. You can even bill against a filtered list of employees if you wanted to by using a custom contact field. So in this instance, anytime an employee is terminated, I move them from active to inactive. This way I can simply bill for all active employees without worrying about inactive employees screwing up monthly counts. You could theoretically use these contact counters to bill for other licensing as well. For example, if every employee gets their own email address, workstation, AV license, backup allowance, and email security, you could include all of that in one or more line items and have those counts dynamically increase or decrease each month as their employee counts change. Now, Synchro offers SplashChop as its native remote access tool, and this can be extended to your end users for an additional cost. You can even use that as a line item to dynamically count how many contacts in any given customer are using this functionality and bill accordingly. On top of all this, we have a fantastic integration with PAX8 where every one of their SKUs can be linked to a recurring invoice in Synchro. This means you can dynamically bill for your Microsoft 365 licenses, for example, and have those counts dynamically increase or decrease whenever the recurring invoice fires. Now, the model I just explained, regardless of what you're billing for specifically, falls into what we'd call an all-you-can-eat model. What if you prefer to sell your customers a block of time up front instead? Syngro fully supports what's known as block hour contracts as well. This is handled by simply adding a standard line item to your recurring invoice for prepaid contract hours. In this example, we're crediting this customer with five hours for the price of $125 an hour. Once sold, these will appear on the customer record here. 
As you bill for labor throughout the month, those hours will be deducted from this bank of hours until they're depleted. After which, any further labor hours will be billed at the rate you've defined in their contract. So if you want to charge more per hour, you can. If you want to provide a discount for going over those hours in any given billing period, you can easily do that as well. If your contracts stipulate that any banked block hours expire at the end of any given billing period, you can configure that in your recurring invoice here. Setting this option effectively sets the prepaid hourly balance to zero before allocating the next five hours from your recurring invoice when it fires. Now, even if you have customers you bill out on an ad hoc basis, it doesn't mean you have to spend inordinate amounts of time generating each of those invoices and sending them off in bulk to your customers. We can save you all of that headache by using a recurring invoice with this checkbox enabled here, which will pick up any pending ticket charges and aggregate them onto this single invoice. If you want to handle this for only a subset of your tickets, like tickets with the status of resolved, you can set that here as well. If you have customers that want their ad hoc invoices sent to them on a different cadence, like once a week, you can simply change how often the recurring invoice fires. You can even set whether or not to send a $0 invoice signifying no work was done during the billing period, or skip sending them an invoice altogether if and when this occurs. Lastly, if you're using one of our payment integrations, you can set your recurring invoices to automatically collect payments from a stored credit card or bank account through ACH as part of the billing process. Synchro will always ensure you're not burning down time on needless admin tasks, so you can reallocate that time to the only thing that truly matters, growing your business.